Sometimes when I start doing research on a story, um, I find very little detail to go on. And so I decided to put a few videos together into one because there's little to go on and I didn't, while these people deserve their stories to be told and they deserve their own video, it's hard to find information on them so I just did the best that I could. But I wanted to tell this story uh, on January the 8th, 2009, Joshua Tesmer, 19, was last seen by his father in the area of the North Mayo Trail in Pikeville, Kentucky. Authorities believe it was possible that he had went for a walk along the Big Sandy River when he accidentally fell into the Lavaza Fork. It's also believed that he could possibly have been intoxicated, but as far as I know, that's mere speculation. His baseball cap was found laying on the riverbank along with some other evidence that was unnamed, suggesting that he may have fallen into the water. Extensive searches have been conducted by law enforcement and the AFD dive team, as well as cadaver dogs that were brought in from the Kentucky Dog Search Association. His body still remains unfound. They do not believe foul play was suspected. His last date of contact was January the 8th, 2009 in Pikeville, Kentucky. He was 19 at the time, Joshua Jerome Tesmer. He was six foot tall and weighed around 190 pounds. He was white and he had light blondish sandy hair. Um, he was believed to have been in the area of the Green Meadow Country Club in North Mayo Trail in Pikeville. Only his cap was found. Uh, he has a scar on his right cheekbone and a tattoo of a large cross on his left shoulder blade. He was wearing blue jeans and a dark hooded Carhartt jacket and blue Nike shoes. Michael Keith Allen of Langley, Kentucky, was last seen May 30th, 2001. He was 25 years old at the time that he went missing. He was 6 foot 8 inches tall and weighed around 250 pounds. Um, he was at his residence and he got into a red pickup truck with an unknown subject. He had brown hair and possibly had facial hair, a small uh, light beard, brown hair, brown eyes. He has a square scar on the bottom of his foot and a cleft chin. He has a wolf tattoo on his right shoulder. Um, Michael Keith Allen, 26, was last seen May 30th, 2001 in his re at his residence in Langley, Kentucky in Floyd County. Witnesses say that he got into a red pickup truck with someone that they did not know. That was the last time he was ever seen. It doesn't say if it was a male or female or if they even saw the driver. This is another case with literally no information. Rumors and accusations were listed on topics, but they were all just hearsay. No one knew who was driving the red pickup truck. Um, was Michael privy to some information that no one else was supposed to know about? Uh, nobody really knows if his family said anything about what he might, where he may have been going or if anyone even knew about where he might be going. Um, they haven't come forward with anything. Or if they have, you know, they may have shared information with the police, but it hasn't been shared here. The next case is Mitchell Manns. This is another case with very little detail. He is listed as endangered missing. He was last seen March 16th, 1990 in Floyd County, Kentucky. Now this case does... Um, I, I will be doing another video that is somewhat related to this story. At least it's suspected that this, that this man's case may be linked 
to another story, but there's no evidence of that. It was suspicion. Um, this man was 39 years old. He was last seen March 16, 1990. He is white, male, six foot one, and weighed three hundred pounds. He had shoulder length brown hair and hazel eyes. Um, he has a ruddy complexion with facial hair, a goatee. He has a scar on his right hand, and he had an elbow injury at the time of his disappearance. He was last seen wearing a white t-shirt with blue work paints, like. Um, Dickies or Carhartt type work paints and white all-star tennis shoes. Mitchell Manns was, had told people that he was heading to McDowell Hospital in Floyd County. Manns was last seen at the Triangle Mart in Martin, Kentucky in Floyd County. He was supposedly trying to get a ride to McDowell Hospital but he never arrived there and was never heard from again. And there's very little else to go on about him. I looked on Facebook to see if there was any more information about him. And the only thing that some people speculated is this story. This is from the Doe Network, or Grateful Doe on Reddit. Skeletal remains of an adult were found submerged in a car in Prestonsburg, Kentucky. No sex was identified but the remains were wearing men's clothing, a pair of boxer shorts, a pair of work pants with a belt that were size that were big bend by Wrangler size thirty eight waist. Well, there was actually a pair of shoes, but they couldn't make out what they were. But only the size was a twelve triple E. Now we all know that that would have been worn by a very large person. Someone with very large feet, rather. Uh, Mitchell Manns could possibly be who this was. He was last seen wearing a pair of blue um, work paints. The clothes found in the water were larger sizes, and Manns was known to be a, a big person. The area where Mitchell Manns was last seen at the Triangle Mart is approximately 13 miles from the Dewey Lake where these remains were found submerged in a vehicle in the water. Reasons why it might not be Mans. Mans was said to be wearing a t-shirt, a white t-shirt when he disappeared, but the John Doe was found with a button-up shirt. The John Doe was also likely wearing glasses and I could find no record of Mitchell Mann having ever worn glasses. Mitchell Mans would also have been traveling in the opposite direction if he was headed to MacDell Hospital. So it doesn't say what kind of car was submerged in this story. I am going to attempt to find more information about that, but as of right now, that's all I can find on on this man's case. I did look him up on Facebook and there was one woman who had commented that she was his niece and that his family had always, you know, tried to keep his name out there but with very little to go on and there was never any sightings of him or anything. So the story about the man's remains being found in the water in Dewey Lake or uh, human remains being found it has been ruled out as having been Mitchell Manns. The story is on Unidentified Wiki, and the story is Ruval Hale, R-U-V-I-L-H-A-L-E. Ruval Hale was a man whose remains were found inside of a submerged vehicle in Dewey Lake in Prestonsburg, Kentucky. He was identified in October of 2022. The clothing that was found was Wrangler Big Ben paints, shoes, socks, a button-down shirt, boxers, and toiletries. Now, Ruval Hill's story is 
what I can remember about it my own self, but I'm going to read it from the Charlie Project, was Ruval Hill went missing in Johnson County, which is adjacent to Floyd County. Hill disappeared from the nursing home where he lived in Johnson County, Kentucky, on July the 3rd, 1990. He disappeared at around 10.25 a.m. A 1988 Ford Tempo was discovered stolen from the parking lot next door to the nursing home. In March of 2022, the missing Ford Tempo was found submerged in Dewey Lake in Floyd County. Hell's skeletal remains were found inside. They were identified by DNA. Now, this is from Unsolved Appalachia. This was before the remains were discovered, so this is the story that was written about him before he was discovered. When we hear or talk about Paintsville, Kentucky, it normally calls to mind Butcher Holler, where Laura Lynn is from. However, I doubt the majority of the people there have ever heard the name Ruval Hell. Ruval Hell was 43 years old and being cared for in a nursing home called the Paintsville Health Care Center. He had suffered an aneurysm and was being treated. At one point in his life, he had been a coal miner for Peter Cave Coal Company. But an unnamed injury caused him to end up in the nursing home. Previously, he had suffered a stroke and he had several seizures. He had muscular weakness of his legs and a lack of coordination. He suffered from memory loss and his throat was paralyzed. The throat was paralyzed, which caused him to strangle very easily. His response time was slow and he had severe mood swings and experienced double vision. He was dependent on medications and needed round the clock care. On July the 3rd, 1990, at around 10.30 a.m., Ruval Hill seemingly vanished without a trace from the care facility. A 1988 Ford Tempo with a half a tank of gas was reported stolen from the parking lot of a nearby Druthers restaurant at around the same time. So now keep in mind I'm reading this. This was before his remains were discovered. Even if he did manage to steal the car, the likelihood of him being able to travel very far when you consider his mental and physical state renders this theory useless. Well, we now know that that was the case. He did get into the car. Um, whether he had clear thinking at that time or not, it could be that once he started driving, he became very confused and drove into the lake by accident. Um, it's also noted that the last disability check that he received was never cashed. He had only $2 on him at the time of his disappearance. Law enforcement conducted aerial and ground searches over the next several days, scouring a 20-mile radius from the location where the car and Ruval vanished. Law enforcement received a tip that a vehicle was last seen headed toward Prestonsburg, fitting the description. So they concentrated a considerable amount of time a considerable amount of time searching on that end of Johnson County. They searched the roadways, strip jobs, ponds, rivers, Dewey Lake, Paintsville Lake, and side roads. Even his home place was searched. Kentucky State Police advised that they searched every location possible and nothing turned up. Well, it could be that at the time that he went into the water, uh, he, he may not have yet gone into the water at that time. He may still have been driving around. But like they said, he only had $2 with him and a half a tank of gas. From this care facility in Johnson County to Dewey Lake in Paintsville or Prestonsburg is a very short distance. It's about 17 miles from Paintsville to Dewey Lake and it's possible that the man drove the car into the water on purpose but it's also possible that
because of his confusion, because of his state of mind, um, headaches and muscle, you know, lack of muscle coordination. He may just have lost control of the car, but that is who the remains belong to that I mentioned in the story about Mitchell Manns. I found a little bit more information about Ruval Hale, and I just wanted to include that in this video. This is from sckentucky.com, the Job Newspaper Network. This was published in January of 2023. Um, the whereabouts of an eastern Kentucky coal miner have remained unknown for over three decades until his skeletal remains were found submerged in Dewey Lake earlier this year. That coal miner was Ruval Hill. He was the father of the former Glasgow superintendent, Keith Hill. Ruval lived a turbulent life, and although no one will ever know what went through his mind on that day, July the 3rd, 1990, what is known is that this, at the same time of his disappearance, a 1988 Ford Tempo was stolen nearby. Floyd County Deputy Coroner Chuck Hall confirmed that the remains found in March had a DNA match confirming it was Ruval. However, his remains had not been released from the state medical office due to an ongoing investigation. Police and search crews spent days looking for the 43-year-old man who had extensive medical problems and likely left his nursing home with only $2 in his pocket. Although he was declared legally dead in 1996, his remains were not found until March of 2022. Based on Ruval's history, it is plausible to believe he may have went searching for his family the day he left the nursing home. Ruval was described as being fiery, short-tempered, and hot-headed. He had, he had multiple medical problems, and after having brain surgery that gave him a 5% survival rate, he declined to the point he was admitted into a nursing home for around-the-clock treatment. Um, he hadn't driven for years, and he always drove with his head tilted. Vision was blurred, and he had double vision. The eastern part of the state is known for extremely curvy roads, and it is believed that Ruval drove for around 15 minutes before he left the roadway. Exactly where he was going is still a mystery. His son wonders if his father had left the nursing home in an attempt to find his family as he was traveling in the direction of their home in Inez, Kentucky. He was halfway there, he said, when he departed the road and crashed into Dewey Lake. Another 15-20 minutes and he would have been at his front door. Um... My first memory of my dad when he got sick was when I was about eight years old. We were getting ready to go on a fishing trip, but little did he know at that moment how his life would change. His father became abusive and aggressive due to his illness. The sad part is, is that he had never been this way before this aneurysm. He never once hit the children. I can see my mom standing at the refrigerator and I was leaning over the sink. He came in with a pistol in his hand and said he wanted to fight me. No one dared challenge him. It was a turning point for my mother. She told us kids to grab what we had and we, we would leave. That evening a series of events followed that started they were driving home from a basketball game. The check engine light flashed on, and Ruval became so angry that he punched his wife in the face. He left her and the two children walking in the dark along US-23. We never really knew what was going to happen, but we knew that it wasn't over. 
This was the beginning of the closing chapter. Ruvel's parents got legal guardianship of their son so, because he was at this point unable to care for himself. The family lost everything. The only father they knew, but they also knew that they lost each other. At 19, Keith was granted conservatorship of his father with the help of an attorney. This gave him the legal rights to deal with everything related to the family's property. His parents finally divorced. However, once Ruval learned of his family's return, he made his way back into their lives uninvited. We owned some property across the road from our house, and my dad would park his car there watching us from daylight to dark. He would tell everyone he saw that we all needed to die. He said he was going to kill us. Despite requests for protection from the local police, the family was informed that the property belonged to Ruval and there was nothing they could do to prevent him from sitting there. Every single day for two years, Keith said, Ruval would sit across from their home watching and waiting to act out against them. He must have got pretty mad at my mom. They ended up putting him in a home. He tried to escape a couple of times from every facility that he was placed in. Keith, the son, landed a scholarship to play basketball at Pipeville College and was finishing up his first year in 1990 when his father disappeared. Keith relinquished his basketball scholarship to try to protect his family. Over time, Keith and his mother built their lives away from Martin County. While his younger brother stayed and started his own family, all three of them found successful paths. I felt good about being able to get conservatorship and take care of my mom. However, he said none of the family members would be there today if it weren't for some of the people encouraging them to move forward. He credits a handful of people, including his mother and grandparents and some educators, Roger Harless and Bobby McCool. They always encouraged me and helped me with anything that I needed, he said. State Representative Bobby McCool told the reporter that wrote this story that Keith was certainly equipped with skills that would ultimately guide him in the right direction. Their paths would cross again later as the tracks of rough waters. Bobby said he could see the gifts Keith possessed and how they would fit him as an educator. Keith Hill later graduated from Moorhead State University and retired as the superintendent of Glasgow Independent Schools after dedicating years as an educator and principal. Keith not only beat the odds of having a lifelong road of difficulties that most adults experience following childhood abuse and trauma, but he was also able to accomplish, along with his wife, in raising two successful daughters. And I'll just wrap this up to say, as of press time, the Kentucky State Police Post, leading the investigation, has not responded to requests for an interview or to give a statement. We have chosen to leave out some of the details in order to reduce the possibility of re-traumatizing individuals. If you have any information or to submit any tips on Joshua Tesmer, Michael Allen, or Mitchell Manns, you can contact the Kentucky State Police at kentuckystatepolice.org slash post nine or you can call 606-433-7711 all three of these cases are still um, unsolved thanks for watching